Hi, it's uh, Martin here again. Uh, welcome back to uh, my channel. Uh, in these days where we take so many pictures uh, digitally or even on film these days uh, using the scanning workflow, the, the pictures all, all end up on a hard drive. Uh, we share the pictures on social media. Uh, we uh, maybe put pictures into albums or even get books uh, made out of the the pictures that were taken but there are times when uh, we take um, take a picture that we think and look at and we think we'd love to, I'd love to see that picture hung on the wall and um, I think you know in some respects uh, that's the way pictures should be seen uh, not on screen they should be seen actually hung uh, framed uh, it's a tactile thing it's the end product of the work that you've done to actually get that picture the only prohibitive uh, thing with that is uh, the cost of actually getting pictures uh, are framed and mounted. It can be quite expensive. Now you, you can do it yourself, but you do need quite a bit of equipment to do that. Uh, you, you need, uh, the, you need a, a, a mount cutter, you need mount board, you need glass, you need a frame, you need a backing board, the list goes on. Uh, and it can, uh, even doing it yourself, work out uh, quite expensive. If you take it to a, a, a professional a framing shop, uh, an image such as um, this, this size, a picture like that, uh, would prof probably cost you in the region between 60 and 90 pounds to actually get uh, framed and mounted with, uh, with glass on. Uh, you know, the, uh, the bits and bobs that come with it, the uh, hanging, the hanging straps, the string, all, all that, it all costs money. So there is an alternative which I've used before and uh, in this video uh, I'm going to show you how, how to actually do it. It's a different way of mounting your pictures and you don't, you don't even need glass and it makes uh, a lightweight uh, frame to actually hang your picture on the wall. And it's using a product called Kozo. Uh, Kozo is a Japanese uh, paper, it's a very strong uh, and a very thin paper and it's made from various plants such as the mulberry bush and the papers handmade but it's so thin that uh, it's virtually impossible to print that through an inkjet printer so mounting the actual Kozo paper onto a backing paper and then putting the ink receptive coat on the Kozo paper itself which allows you to print the picture through the inkjet printer as you would do with any fine art papers the only difference using a, a Kozo paper is that you can actually separate the Kozo paper after you've printed uh, from the backing paper. Uh, this is the backing paper and that's a Kozo paper. And you can see it's very, very thin but very strong. And once you've printed the image, you can pull the actual image off the backing paper. And that's what we're left with. That's the actual Kozo paper itself. Now all you need to uh, mount the picture is some soft wood. Uh, I use an inch and a half by half an inch plain soft wood. You need a way of being able to cut the corners square and at 90 degrees so they butt up nicer when you glue them. Make sure that they, they're all the same size depending on what uh, frame size you're going to make and once you've made that and glued it together then you can actually uh, mount the Kozo paper onto the frame and uh, stretch it and I'll show you in this video how that's done uh, and it's a quite simple process but the actual cost of getting the picture mounted like this uh, so it's uh, ready to hang on the wall is a fraction of the cost of uh, uh, putting them in a frame uh, with glass with mount board etc so it's an interesting way, a different way of doing it. So I'll go on the computer now. I'll show you the image that uh, I'm going to print. I'll, I'll show you how I uh, print the image and then how I mount it to this frame and show you the finished product. So this is the picture I'm going to print on the Kozo paper, a picture of a rose that I took with uh, my 1927 uh, Voigtlander uh, Burkheil folding camera. So it's not done bad for an old age pensioner. 
Uh, I'm just going to open it up in uh, Photoshop. The actual Bergheil is a 6x9 camera, uh, but I've already cropped this picture to the size of the frame that I'm going to uh, mount it on, which is uh, 13 by 15 inches. Save this. Uh, to a folder on my desktop and then go to the printing software that I use which is a, a image print made by Colorbyte it's a, a RIP processor but it doesn't matter what you use if you're printing through the, the Epson software as long as you get what you see on screen that's fine it's just that I tend to use a uh, uh, this uh, this uh, rip processor for uh, for all my printing. I might do a video on the, of this later on because it is quite interesting how it works. But for now, we're concentrating on the print. So I'm going to open the uh, print into uh, image print. And center it. Now you'll see that the uh, picture's not um, filling the actual... Uh, paper size that I've uh, created. I've made the paper size uh, an inch wider all the way around the actual picture itself and that's so I can have a little bit of a, what they call wiggle room when I mount the uh, the picture to the actual frame. You'll see what I mean uh, later on in the video. I'll just check that everything's set correctly. Uh, matte grey, uh, the, that's the profile I'm printing through. Uh, Japanese Kozo paper. And I'll just go into uh, what they call the narrow gamut picker and apply a tone that I use uh, for my prints. I call it a, a delicate uh, warm tone. Just gives that uh, sort of ageless look to these type of pictures. And that's uh, created that uh, warm tone to the picture. So I'm going to uh, select print and print the image. I'll let you uh, watch the image being printed and then show you how I uh, mount the uh, Corso paper to the actual frame. Right, I'm uh, <coughs> nearly ready to print. I've got the Corso paper uh, cut. I would advise when you cut the uh, Corso paper is to roll it the opposite way because it's quite a curly paper and just leave it for half an hour and it'll just stop that curl. So that's something I would uh, advise you do. Now it's curling the right way. And you can see on Corso paper it does have marks on it. Tiny marks here and there. And that, that's completely natural. It's a natural product showing through on the paper. So uh, it's something that you have to accept with this paper. So I'm going to put it in the printer now. And then press print. I just hope that uh, I've got enough ink to print this. So I'm going to put it in the rear feed. The rear feed. Right, it's loaded into the printer and press print and see what happens. Well, it's printing. So that's the, uh, the finished print. On Corso paper you do sometimes get little marks. Uh, they're not, um, uh, it's not nothing to do with the printing. It's just to do with the imperfections in the paper because it's a, a handmade product. So you've got to accept uh, tiny little marks. It's not a, a paper that's uh, perfectly uniform like uh, say uh, the other paper that I use, Epson Cold Press Bright. But it is a handmade paper, so we can't uh, expect uh, perfection. So, the first thing I've got to do is get the uh, Corso paper off the backing paper. I do that with a sharp knife in the corner and just gently peel so I've got an area that I can pull out. And then start to pull the uh, paper off. Just doing it gently. Now 
nearly there. That's it. That's the backing paper. And that's the actual close up paper. You can see how thin and thin it is, but it's not fragile, it's very, very strong. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, just leave that and we'll get some um, uh, double sided tape, get the frame, so the best edge for the front is probably that one. So I'm going to put the double sided tape on this edge at the uh, which could be the back of the picture. Just making it sure I get it to the uh, right to the back edge to the this edge here. Making sure I've got the tape right up to that edge. And go uh, around it all. Right, it's got that tape on. And then what I'm going to do is get the actual uh, print itself. I'm going to tape it to the table by the corners. And then uh, gently roll the paper down. Put the tape in that corner. Corner. Just flatten it down there a little bit if I can. Because this is where the actual uh, double sided tape is going to stick. Because I've got older and more fingers and thumbs. Right, that should do it. So that's got that fastened down. Now we've got the we've got the frame here, and now I'm going to take off the the backing off the double sided tape. See, then very carefully. So I'll only have one chance at this: is lining it up with the print, the top there and the bottom edge. I'll fasten it on the, uh, on the top first. Line it with that side, press it down. Apply some pressure all the way around. Uh, remove this tape. Turn the picture over and make sure it's fully pressed down on that, that tape. And then getting a knife, a uh, sharp knife. Where's my uh, cutting uh, mat? There we go. Place it on the edge and very carefully just, just see that cut down the uh, 
edge where it's uh, overlapped. So there we've got it uh, mounted to the board. Now the thing is, it's very, very slack. It's mounted to the board now, and it's, uh, you see, it's very, very slack. So I'm just going to let the uh, the tape uh, just go off a little bit because it uh, it'll take a few minutes to set, and um, and then I'll show you how to uh, how we're going to tighten this up. But that's it in actual frame now. Right, it's uh, another day. I decided to leave the um, the double sided tape uh, overnight just to set to make sure it's properly cured because the the, the Kozo uh, paper that's now fastened to the uh, frame with the tape is quite uh, slack and uh, I need to tighten that up and it puts a little bit of strain on the tape so you've got to make sure that it's uh, you know it's it's at its uh, full strength. So I'm going to show you now how a uh, simple process how to tighten the the Kozo paper up so uh, it's it loses all the wrinkles that's in the paper etc it just tightens it up nicely so I'll get set up and show you that so I'm going to get the uh, the print and uh, I've just put some um, water around about 20 degrees centigrade which is just plain water and I'm going to spray it over the uh, print and then lay it down because what we don't want is water running down into the gap where the tape is uh, it might soften it so all I'm going to do is a nice spray over the print just to dampen it down um, lay it flat and then just let it dry and the Corso will tighten up just give it a nice spray now Then lay the print down. Might put a bit on the back. So that's the uh, print all sprayed up. Uh, probably just take it outside in the air and uh, let it dry off naturally. And as it dries, the Colzo paper will start to tighten up. And I can show you uh, when it's done that, because you know, it, it'll sound a bit like a, a drum. So we'll just leave that to dry. And then we'll just have a, a look at the print and discuss. Uh, uh, you know wh why we would want to use something like Kozo paper uh, and the actual effect that it, that, uh, it gives. I just uh, thought I'd show you this. I've actually laid it on a towel and it's uh, it's not in a, a confined area so there's air coming in and you can see how it's uh, saturated the print and hopefully that will uh, tighten up like a, a drum. Oh, that's the plan. The print's uh, dry now on the back, and you can hear now it's tightened up like a drum. So the next thing I'm going to do, and um, this is not a step you have to take, but I'm going to just spray it with a, a protective coating. I do this with a lot of my prints. It's um, animal. Uh, protective spray. It'll just uh, uh, give it that little bit of extra protection, just a light coating, uh, because there's no need to put glass in front of the picture. Should dry pretty quick and once it's dry just give it another spray over that print will be fully protected then another coat that will do so the next stage um, I'm going to just uh, put some Renaissance wax on the actual frame and um, try and fit some hooks at the back and we'll have it hang it up and have a, a good look at the print 
So this is a uh, finished picture of the rows. I took this with my Voigtlander Bergheil 6x9 folding camera uh, built in 1927. It has a Helio lens on it and uh, for a camera nearly a hundred years old I don't think it's done a bad job. It's printed on the Corso paper which I've uh, separated from the backing paper, stuck it back to, to the back of the uh, the frame that I've made myself in soft wood and, um, and then simply wet the print and uh, it stretched it and all in all it looks really really nice the, the quite unique uh, images that are printed this way because the Corso paper is so thin when you look at the actual blacks they have a mottled uh, like effect to them and that's because of, of the thinness of the paper and they give this lovely mottled effect and looking at the print the actual darker tones take on this uh, like a, a, a colour dusty uh, look to them and looking from the side it almost looks like velvet the actual rose head on this is absolutely fantastic it, it really does uh, when I'm stood here looking at it in real life it looks 3D it looks like you can, you can uh, go up to, to the rose and get hold of it and pull it out of the picture so as I say it's turned out really really nice the uh, Cozo paper uh, it's still made today, it's one of the oldest processes of making paper, it's all handmade and it's a very very stable paper so a print like this is going to last for years you can hang that picture straight on the wall, you don't need no glass uh, it's been sprayed with the animal protective spray so any uh, marks on it will just wipe off gently you could mount normal photographs printed on normal uh, thickish uh, fine art paper and mount them exactly the same way um, because they're, they're set back in the frame again there's no need to put glass over them glass sometimes can be a nuisance with the reflections from them you know from the uh, bright surfaces and lights for me looking at a print without glass looks so so much better so reluctantly I'm going to put this uh, print on eBay for auction it measures uh, 13 inches wide by 15 inches tall or uh, near enough that uh, that size it's printed with a, uh, a nice uh, slight warm tone, it's only delicate, it just gives it that timeless look. So if you want to uh, help support my channel, uh, go to the link in the description to the eBay auction and uh, place a bid. To me, pictures like this are what you might call fine art because you can't create this look without using a paper like uh, the Japanese Kozo. It wouldn't look the same if it was printed on a normal cotton rag. It looks more a work of art than, than a photograph, if that's, uh, that's the best way I can really explain it. You need the type, type of Corso paper where you can separate it from the backing. I think most of them do that actually, but I'll leave a, a link in the description. So, if you want to own a unique uh, print on Corso paper, mounted in a different way, please go to the auction and uh, put a bid in to help uh, support my channel. Uh, if you've liked this video, please give me a like, or better still, subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, please leave them below and I'll get back to you. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.